And just based off Vulcan's early run down the lane, you generally don't... With the Jace, I believe he started gate. They're trying yep. to rush to the triangle brush of TSM's bottom lane and catch someone coming towards that, that area. Because they had the Jace acceleration gate, they can get there faster than the enemy team. TSM's nowhere near, though. So there isn't going to be any guard on the tri brush. None whatsoever. They are moving power in numbers towards the top side just to get these wards down. Volatile explosive spider going out. Looks like they are back to safety. Whether they are going to try and deny something here or just stick with the golems, I think they're not going to find too much. Yeah, the one thing that has an advantage here for Vulcan is normally when you invade this aggressively, you're at least walking through a few wards. The fact that TSM went all the way for enemy red side wards but didn't ward their own red side whatsoever means they got to be very careful, which is why they're all staying grouped up because they're kind of expecting to run into some trouble. And teams have had to have watched Velocity or Vulcan so far. That ward has been placed at Golem every time now. It's been done by more teams than Vulcan, and maybe TSM will expect it because it's becoming more of a standard mm -hmm. strategy here. Vulcan is looking for a delayed invade, and they're still not tipped off to where TSM will be because TSM hasn't even looked at the double Golem wards yet. They have wards protecting the blue, so that's going to be safe for the odd one. They know nothing's coming from the tri-bush invade at 140 top side, but the bottom side is still a question. Oh, man, this could be a very scary walk. It looks like they could stay in mid. Yeah, X-Special did not see anything there. Neither did Wild Turtle. There's a lot of question marks going on. You can see X-Special and Wild Turtle are going for a delayed blue invade. Vulcan has the complete mind game advantage here because TSM has not spotted a single one member of their team in the last two minutes and ten seconds. You gotta tell me Vulcan just saw them. Actually, they're gonna come up on the back side of Reginald here. They may be able to get some attack down. Jace is gonna be there. No damage, but a two-minute flash burned on Reggie. And right away, Vulcan's decided to do a 2v1 mid against Reginald. Bloodwater as well will help shove that lane very quickly since Ryze's wave clear is not that good compared to other mages. That is a smart move early on by Vulcan. A really, really smart move, knowing if they pressured hard enough, yeah, we'll blow flash, the kill would be, you know, to boot, but a great strategy to get that pressure down quick. So the odd one is definitely going to have to be towards mid now. But one thing that just happened actually is X Smithy used his smite in TSM's jungle, which meant he could not take that blue buff safely with X Special harassing him. He didn't necessarily spend enough time on the red to get the pull, and now the steel threat is there, but there could very well be some fighting going There's on. There's a lot of level one still coming into this. We only have a level two X Smithy and Odd when the jungler's been able to pick up two camps. He tries to get X Smithy, knowing that's where the damage is coming from, and the tank is. They go back onto Man Cloud. X Special actually not taking that much of damage for his blood to the Odd one. They're gonna continue this on. They have to be careful. Zuna's not even moving in mid, and he, he has people coming up behind him looks like he's gonna start to take that pressure into consideration that was really well played by T tsm and it worked for a couple reasons wild turtle stayed in the bottom lane long enough to get level two before he decided to come up and everything cascaded off of x smithy not having smite it gave the odd one time to run up here and threaten the blue buff and then vulcan really just overstayed their welcome once x smithy realized he didn't have smite he needed to concede that to tsm We'll have to see if Zuna and Bloodwater can push this turret down in mid. It seems like they have Reginald under his turret. Xmithy grabs up red, forced to go back after that from the engagement previously. Shouldn't hurt him too much. He should have that golem and back in, or spirit stone and back in. Oh, It'll no. be okay for him. I believe he's sitting on 420 yeah. gold. So if he wanted the spirit stone, Xmithy could have picked it up, but instead he went for a cloth armor. Sejuani so actually has a lot of damage in the jungle, but not necessarily that much mm -hmm. sustain. So. There's only a slight damage increase um, toward, <clears throat> sorry, towards the Butcher's Blade from the Spirit Stone, so the right. might be smart. Looks like a fast, fast turret here for Team Solo Mid. One of the quickest, I believe it was about 445 for the previous, 515 just after that. And we're consecutively getting lower, and here it goes. Four minutes and 35 seconds. They take it out 10 seconds privy to the last. And I believe this lane swap has not worked out whatsoever for Vulcan, mainly because Mandatory Cloud was never able to get down there. He started to help the blue buff invade, and he died for it, and that just allowed TSM the power to push that lane freely. Vulcan never got defenses there, and also Bloodwater was helping as well, so Zuna never got the shove on Reginald in the first place. Where is High, right? Or High, yeah, Mandatory Cloud, rather. He is actually down back at 4 CS. smithy has been able to grab up more, so we're at the sea. Man Cloud now left on an island again. He was behind this game. We'll see if he can repeat the last game he played in this, in this situation. 
Yankov is going to need a lot more help if he wants to be able to get to those situations because he has been shut down yeah. a lot. Just the fairy charm, oh, actually, he's not even near the tier. <laughs> exactly. He had no business going to those lanes because Wild Turtle was just running free with Draven extra levels from that free lane he took earlier. So the push still going in there, trying to get as much damage on that mid turret, and they haven't even, you know, they got it down to half HP. Reginald coming back to lane, he has got himself his tier, hasn't had too much trouble farming at the turret because he has been full aggressed in that mid lane after losing Flash at two minutes. Exactly. The one benefit the TSM had, though, is they created enough pressure elsewhere in the jungle that Reginald could get away with not having his flash up as well when you're 2 be winning with the Tristana the whole purpose is kind of to shove so having Reginald's flash down wasn't as punishing as if it was in a 1v1 lane and he was somewhat pushed up mm -hmm. because as long as he's at his turret the flash doesn't necessarily matter and something we haven't looked at yet the Kinku order in the top lane Shen versus Kennen. I was going to say Shen versus Psycho Sid but it, that wouldn't work Shen versus Kennen <laughs> in the top lane a little bit more harassy from from Kennen but you can see that Dyrus knows he's just going to take some shurikens they're they're pretty pretty steady in CS it was uh, Psycho Sid getting that grab on 17 more as Dyrus has just gone back so he's going to clean that up and Kennen's early strength is in the lane for mm -hmm. the most part especially when you go Dorn's blade on Kennen against Shen who has a melee attacker the harass is there, and a 47 <laughs> to 30 is not a surprising number. It's not like uh, Dyrus is getting super outplayed there. Right. So it looks like they should have enough damage. No, actually, to take down this turret. Reginald throws down the ultimate, clears out the wave quickly. Desperate power, and they look to continue as Elise comes in. If Vulcan can get that turret before Draven pulls anywhere else, that early game will be okay for them. But you can Ooh. see TSM looking to stop him. No ulti on Bloodwater in middle. It's looking a four to six fight there. And they continue to go out. Here's a special finding Smithy. Both of them actually finding each other as they trade damage. And Smithy's early jungle hasn't looked that potent. He's one level behind the odd one. None of his ganks have really worked out. So much of it going off of the early invade that TSM put on him. Sejuani doesn't necessarily come back that well if she's behind unless they get really good team fights once she hits level six. And this is an early dragon attempt by TSM. Having vision of Sejuani in middle, and it looks like if Smithy has just smited a minion, so they will not have any trouble grabbing this. No. Pretty much a dragon for the turret. Yeah. They recognized that the turret was low and the Falcon was putting a lot of time and resources into getting it. And TSM was okay trading that dragon because they know it's gonna at least keep their gold lead at what it was before the trade, actually a little bit higher because Dragon does give more gold in turrets. That is going to show in about a thousand gold here, just above 1300 gold in the favor of Team Solo mid. Playing it, playing it quite smart at this point, but that turret for Vulcan is gonna help them keep in that gold discrepancy. So going through a ward up to the top lane, trying to keep it safe. Looks like they're gonna now try to pressure down the top turret as it is in favor of Vulcan. Vulcan's really trying to get something going here. Obviously, Zuna cannot think about fighting his opposing AD carry and Wild Turtle for quite some time, so Vulcan instead is trying to just keep the lanes pushed and keep TSM fighting minions instead of Vulcan because Vulcan wants to get later. And it's kind of been, you know, what we talked about before. These lanes are quite hard to gank. Nothing's happened top lane. It's kind of been walk-in for everybody in the mid lane, and when they did get the gank, it's as Reginald started it with the Rune Prison, and then Odwin was able to come in, so... Everybody doing what they can. It's only been one kill in eight minutes, but a lot of presence in every lane so far. Yeah, and TSM, despite it only being one to zero right now, I feel like is still looking for the fast win. That was a really good steal by Vulcan as long as they can get out of here, mm -hmm. and I think they can. It would be nice. That was the first time they've really tried to activate something in their favor. They had the bottom golem, yeah. and they aren't forgetting about trying to just get themselves small advantages here. So nine minutes, they steal away the blue buff. They'll be keeping the timer on that for the 14 opponent blue really solid it keeps Reginald's blue away as well which will keep his spamming down quite a bit on rise early game rise has very high mana cost and the blue buff is quite required until he gets those tier that got a stack so you need ammo from your not only your a, a well executed though. skill a good tactical skill but to see what's going on in the jungle two ability tomes coming into the hands of odd one looks like he may be going for that spectral wraith build up psycho Sid could finally see a bit of action here in the top lane, the first gank towards this area. And he might just have to concede this turret altogether. Yeah, that minion wave is it. huge. Psycho Sid, while Kenning does have wave clear, it's only if he's able to run through the minion line, and that would have been suicide. <laughs> so TSM knowing that they need to start battering down back at Vulcan, they will grab the second turret of the game. That's going to put them up another good chunk of gold, so they're definitely starting to grab an upper hand here, like you said, looking for the fast win, and they're triggering everything they need to to make that happen. TSM's playing a pretty confident game right now. Mm -hmm. They know they've gotten Mandatory Cloud on his back foot. 
he's going to be sitting back. That was really the the early threat they would have had to deal with. It's like, what's Jace going to do in the mid game? Because they knew that Zuna isn't going to do stuff in mid game because he's Tristani. He's just due to farming. And then Psycho Sid is the the threat they then have to deal with. That's why they put three people in Psycho Sid's lane. So TSM dealing with all of Vulcan's avenues right now, and that's the reason they have the 2,000 gold lead. You see Man Cloud trying to p stack up that tier in the bottom lane. He's had free farm the whole time pretty much, and he's really been able to kept, catch up to Reginald, and his tier is almost exactly the same as Reggie's too. So those guys are actually quite evening out for the amount of time Man Cloud has just had here by himself. Yeah, Man Cloud's tier is actually at 240, whereas Reginald's is at 140. That just has a little bit to do with him getting the tier yeah. Bef like with no boots he hasn't been back to shop in forever jace is actually sitting on 1600 gold but it's also been Jeez. because vulcan's not doing much on the map right now and that's another reason tsm is pushing down mid lane there's 1500 gold in the hands of three members on vulcan right now jace being back means he's not in this fight so that gold is not present yet they're still trying to hold this turret but we can see how tsm is really taking it to him with their buys but they still have 2k in the pockets as well exactly so tsm just trying to punish Vulcan for not shopping. Mm -hmm. They don't want Vulcan to be able to stall this game out. And once again, even though it looks slow because the kill score is one to zero, yeah. TSM is putting on a lot of turret focused pressure right now. It's like they're gonna continuously go down this mid lane, at least with a special and wild turtle to keep that vision on whoever is there. You can see the ward placed down by Vulcan to make sure they have vision of any lane leaves and where that gank might be going gotta see as well how long it takes for Zuna to actually get to his items and what path he takes. Right now Zuna's sitting on the 1700 gold, just the Vamp Scepter. He could go for a BF Sword or he could be going for a Blade of the Ruined King like we saw Maple Street doing in the Velocity game. That would give them a little bit more mid-game presence if he goes Blade of the Ruined King to maybe deal with the Draven. Yeah. Or if they're really going all in, he's gonna slow build up to that Infinity Edge. It's gonna be interesting. In the end, that Blade of the Ruined King is gonna help anyways. You're gonna have a rise, pretty tanky. Dyrus is gonna get big, and the odd one may start building that way once he gets his aura items in. He starts going for that HP on the Randuins. So we'll see 17,000 gold. TSM steadily holding this lead. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been really much of a change as now that they're kind of, you know, working things in their way. I actually feel like both of these teams are saying, all right, I'm okay if this goes to late game. Obviously, TSM is keeping the turret pressure more so because that's the style they play, and that's how they're trying to punish Vulcan since TSM's mid-game is better. But the rise, in particular, from Reginald, he personally has the confidence of him being able to take over the game if he gets his farm down, which is what he's trying to do here in mid lane. And it looks like, you know, they know, obviously they know they're playing for the late game. They pick the champions, but even in the purchases right now, Kennen going for the Giants belt against the Giants belt of Dyrus instead of building for Azanias to get himself mm -hmm. in the fight. He'll have it later. Yeah, Psycho Sid might be going for a Rylize really early on. Maybe trying to slow some people down because Dyrus is actually going Sunfire Cape slash Randwins and not itemizing against Psycho Sid. I'm surprised Psycho Sid actually isn't trying to punish Dyrus more for Dyrus really disrespecting him a bit by not building any magic resist. He's been just throwing himself into this lane. Maybe he's running it heavy on the Mastery's runes, but I don't think he changed anything up just to play against the Psycho Sids. Like you said, not really giving respect to that lane, and but Psycho Sids should be going harder. They start to pressure down towards this Dragon area as it is up. And now we might see the Shen coming in to benefit TSM because Psycho Sid has no way of matching Dyrus if they decide to fight in this area, and TSM should have the area control here bouncing between the dragon and the mid lane could grant them one of the two objectives as Dyrus and Psycho City just kind of play with each other. Well if you really think about Dyrus's buy here with what's going to happen he will be able to mitigate everything he's fighting against. He's yeah. leaving that AP lane. As long as he can get away from Psycho City and Psycho City is not wanting to let him <laughs> do that all over as him. TSM's running towards the dragon. I think eventually though yeah, Dyrus Psycho City's lost vision of him and TSM would be able to take this dragon if they really want it but they're baiting for a fight. You, you can see how back and forth this is getting. Psycho City's calling that there, I can't see Dyrus. Now he can. Dyrus may be teleporting in. He's backing off of the turret here. Odd one going very low onto this one. Will he decide to come in? No teleport from Dyrus. They play this one calmly. And that's probably the reason Vulcan didn't decide to dive in, despite the odd one being very low, is because Psycho Sid was out of interruptible range for Shen's ultimate stand united, and it stopped them from being able to do that. But in all of Dyrus trying to poke back a lot, it may actually end up costing them this top turret as Psycho Sid presses on. He goes hard, gets the turret. They needed that very much so. That's why they played it safe. You are very much correct. 2K is still the gold lead about with 2-2 two to two in turrets. So it's still going to be spread across nicely. A 15-minute Oracle coming in for a special. So pretty early Oracles for him. 
He could have finished his Ruby Sight Stone, but the team in general has a lot of ward coverage already, and they may want to retake a bunch of free goodies around that dragon area because they know how heavily warded it was if he goes down there. Also, TSM wants to get control of this blue again as the previous one had been stolen away. That's why he has the oracles. Looks like they are moving in for this one, cleaning it out, making sure no upper hand from, Vul from Vulcan can be had here. Psycho Sid trying to get himself in. Thought we were going to see the flash engage, but there wasn't enough vision as that ward has been taken out. They play it safe. Yeah, we're 15 minutes in, and I don't think we've seen an ultimate used other than a rise alt to clear the wave. <laughs> I guess that special did use a box around right. the dragon, but that is pretty much it. These guys are really saving their stuff for the first team fight. Backing up onto this one, Zuna's the last one there, so they're going to keep turning tail for this. 102 CS, two rises, 88 in mid. So we've seen Man Cloud now pull himself up on top. He's starting to get those items. He's now got himself uh, over Reginald, and he was three levels behind, but he is still a level behind right now. They're taking it a little bit slow, I'd have They to are. Say. They're making it's, sure there's safety. In they're the making sure everything. there's I think some of it has to do with TSM's one and two start. They really want to make sure they don't come out of this Super Week with a losing record, which means they have to win their next two. TSM's the defending champs here, and they do have the lead here. They believe they're a better team than Vulcan, so they're making sure that they're not forcing themselves into any mistakes. Mandatory Cloud and team gunning for it. He is the only one to go down so far. TSM was able to find him quite early, but it's been, like you said, just very safe mm -hmm. play. Besides that, Reginald and team not wanting to give up that history of having the championship behind them. So they want this win, so they're not forced into bad momentum. We know Vulcan uses that. Zuna said it before. And they really haven't created any of this game yet, but neither team can. It's kind of odd. Not really, and it's surprising considering when the team fights do start, oh. they're going to be very clumped up just based on the way the team comps interact. Psycho Sid will be able to kind of go in and catch TSM's bruiser line in fights, but until someone decides to engage, neither team can really fight. The engage itself is all kind of in the hands of Vulcan. TSM can maybe go in with a rune prison or a cocoon if the odd one lands, but it's not nearly as reliable or on demand as Vulcan's engage. And since Vulcan's been behind and wanting to get to late game, that's probably why it's only 1-0 to zero right now. This is really just that point of interest part. Dragon's down, nobody can go for Baron yet, and it's what can we focus? Everybody's kind there of in is. that lull, and this is the focus! Shock Blast coming from the right side, huge damage! The clump up, but everybody's forced to flash as they sit on an under Psycho Sid's ultimate. He grabs a kill onto a special wild turtle on the back line, is just peeled out! Cannon goes down just with a little bit of health left. Reginald on the auto attack, and they continue to push mid. Really strong amount of disengage, kind of surprise disengage by TSM. Especially even though he died in that fight, is probably the MVP. His box, most of the five pentagram walls of that pentagram actually broke off, yeah. doing full damage, keeping Reginald to the side safe, and keeping Wild Turtle at a sliver for them to take on. That's why Vulcan was waiting so long for those fights, because they thought something like that would happen. They were finally able to pressure it. Seeing Psycho Sid and Man Cloud on the outer lanes gave them just enough initiation to really put the pressure on the turret and find a mistake from Vulcan there. So Reginald and crew playing that one smart. Probably got a little bit of a relief sigh after it, knowing that, you know, the fight can go in their favor here, and they've seen the damage that Vulcan has been able to bring out after their buys. Absolutely, and there's still no Infinity Edge for Vulcan Zuna. Mm -hmm. That fight didn't give them gold because they just got the one kill on a Psycho Sid and then lost objectives. They lost two turrets for that after the fight, and TSM's Golby ballooned a little bit to 4,000, so that fight was bad, but the next fight could be worse. A locket of the Iron Solari coming up for the odd one. He likes cooldowns, so does Elise. It's gonna be good. <laughs> we'll see what they can pressure with that. We see Bloodwater walking around with Man Cloud, trying to get to clear on all these wards that are being placed. 20 minutes into the game, TSM holds with two turrets ahead of Vulcan right now. But they're not seeming to pressure it. Looks like it's going to be the second tier turret in mid that's going to get the look. And X Specials bought another Oracles because they want to keep the control on. Once TSM has the four turrets down, Vulcan's going to be trying to ward up their own jungle so they can continue farming. That's why there's the Oracles from X Special. That's why they're denying it. And that's why TSM is pushing strong up mid. Mirror mana being stacked up pretty close for Jace now. Looks like he's 740, 750. So it's going to be propped up in this fight. It will change. Looks like he will be able to guard the turret. Maybe. No, TSM goes very hard on this one, knowing Psycho Sid is back. A lot of area of effect not there for the team. His ultimate's up, and he tries to get back with the team. TSM knows to keep it safe. And Vulcan's super apprehensive right now. They lost a lot of turret health. Half of their inhibitor turret 
just completely gone because Psycho Sid didn't necessarily get back in time. Good successful push for TSM. TSM actually has a choice here because there's a huge wave stacking while the Dragon's coming up. But I believe Dyrus' ultimate cooldown will sink fairly close. There's 20 seconds left on Stand United. So there will be a 10 second desync between the Dragon spawn and the Stand United. But I would be very surprised if Falcon knew that exact time. This is a big portion of the game here. The Mirror Mon is finished. There is enough gold in the hands of Zuna to finish that Infinity Edge. And there really isn't a lot of tankiness being built on Reginald yet. So they may be able to go through these fights if they can avoid Odwin and Dyrus. And Psycho Sid's doing his best to just keep lanes where Dyrus isn't pushed up yeah. to keep TSM on the run. But speaking of that, TSM's on the hunt for Psycho Sid. It's going to be tricky for him to escape this He's going to try to walk this one out. He wants to turn. He's going to give it up for his life. He still has Surge. He's moving himself in a good position. He may go for the execute here. If he can get around, he probably will still running. But there's that speed surge coming from Turtle. Gets him with a stand aside, and this is going to be a take. Yeah, Wild Turtle's going to be able to spam a lot of move speed. Reggie <laughs> pops his ult to go. And Vulcan is running for Baron, actually. TSM doing the same. Reginald is going to try to finish off with the Draven Boy, ulti. Boy, hit him! Eventually, they're going to get him, but Vulcan kind of wanted the fight. TSM is all over <laughs> this play, though. Look at this guy. This is fantastic. Ring around the Rosie with Reginald in his own base right now. They're going for the fight. They have had enough of it. TSM says, let's do this if they don't have that area of effect once again. Dyrus goes down. It may have been too much. We see the repel. It goes down onto Psycho Sid. Actually, Man Cloud goes down. Psycho Sid previously, and they're going to continue here. Zuna goes down. The volatile spider coming out. Xmithy and Bloodwater forced away. And that Baron attempt may now be Team Solo Mids. Really good flank there by TSM. Zuna was trying to go for Dyrus. They were trying to do the pincer, pincer move. And the odd one landed the cocoon right onto the face of Zuna. So a great pickoff there. First real fight of the game is very scattered. And Reginald actually makes it all the way back for this Baron attempt. So they should be able to take this one out. If X Smithy doesn't try for a Miracle Steal. And this is when they need to get that burst. It's going to be so tough for Vulcan to climb over this mountain that TSM is going to get with Baron. Yeah, yeah, Zuna finished that Infinity Edge, but he still isn't bringing the attack speed that's coming from the other side of the map yet. And this is a very throwback game for TSM as well. They're just keeping it slow. They're winning kind of just by slowly being better. Mm -hmm. There's no miraculous plays. It's kind of like, oh, here's another TSM victory. That's why they're the best is what we would say back in Season 2. And it's looking similar to this before because nothing miraculous has happened. They're just slightly and slowly outplaying their opponents. It's steady play. Dyrus really hasn't been in the top lane. He's participating in a lot more fights than alting into the fights. It's been up for mm -hmm. quite a while. And we've said it a few times, but alts really like aren't being used almost. It's like you'll see a few, and then it's just everybody disengage until they get to that late game. Zuna didn't want anything of that last fight, and we saw how fast he went down. And a lot of the times, the presence of the ultimate, just knowing that it's there, is better than actually using the spell. With the things like TF ultimate or Stand United, it's yeah. like, we can't do anything, guys, because Shen ultimate is up. We don't want to do anything here because Dyrus could be here. We should deal with Dyrus, and as long as he keeps that threat up, Vulcan's constricted. Definitely playing on their mind right now in the mental game play. 6-2. Fly down mid to see what Vulcan is going to put up to defend this push. We have Draven just coming up on the back side. That is Wild Turtle. And there, Dyrus finally off on the side. So now the pressure even playing more on their mind that Dyrus mm -hmm. will be coming in and not already in the play. And at this point, Dyrus is also just making sure the lanes are pushing together. There's a huge wave, actually, you can see on the minimap over in the top lane that I'm surprised Dyrus isn't dealing with. But that means I think TSM wants to go a little bit quickly. They may just all pile on another turret. Heading down towards that. Yeah, they have Dyrus there. He's going to back. He's going to grab the bottom lane now. They said, wave. you guys need to take mm -hmm. this. I need to soak that up. So a smart, another slow play by TSM. When they land the stun, they're not going because they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, Dyrus isn't here with us. But that is a huge oh amount of damage gosh. coming down from Reginald. More so than other, uh, other players, Reginald will blow ultimates on turrets for the harass. And that was a great example of how much you can do just by using an ult. He's only waiting on 30 some seconds to get that ultimate back. A little plus over that. Odd one. Going to be able to take down the turret with the rest of his team. Behind the Dyrus cleaning up the top. They are still ready to fight. TSM is just bringing this tank all around the map. One of the slowest kill wise games we've had so far in the LCS. But a very well played one by TSM thus far. Really taking the options away from Balkan, as far as I can tell. Slow and steady wins the race. They, TSM used to be one of those teams that would give up Dragon because it could be a pitfall in the early part of the game. Here, they've made decisions of when to take Dragon and when to take Baron, and they've been 
absolutely perfect. Psycho oh, Sal getting caught out there hiding in the fog of war. And that ward over the wall gave him the upper hand. So much ward control by TSM just making sure Vulcan wasn't there. Psycho Sid wanted to get ahead of the game and clear off a wave of the turret and ends up just crushing their own base. Unfortunate. They made sure Psycho Sid didn't get a lot of action in the early part of the game, being one to win it for them last time on his cannon play. Dyrus played it safe. Props to him on that. And from there, they've really been able to pressure everything. The ult comes out from Sejuani. Bloodwater on the back side, just trying to slow them so Zuna can stay in a safe spot. But no, right to the back side. He gets the wild growth too. The final amount of peel comes in. It's going to be big. He has to stay alive with his own barrier. Flashes out of that one. One more attack coming in. It's Dyrus just a second too late. Oh! Oh, I thought that was Zuna again. You were going to be crazy. And that was just <laughs> desperation time for Vulcan. Now Psycho Sid's trying to hold up. The inhibitors still haven't been cleared for TSM, and their AD carry is dead. So the inhibitor's going down more slowly, but I think TSM's going to get it. This inhibitor turret, and then they move to the mid inhibitor, now to the top inhibitor. Jack, this is not good when you can't be pushed out of the base. Exactly. That Baron regen is what's keeping them in, as well as the huge lead they've accumulated over the last 26 minutes. It's a 4v3, and Vulcan, Whoa. it's got to be desperation. One of the fastest games we may be seeing here. 26 minutes in, Team Solo mid once again just dropped somebody 100 to 0. This time it's Zuna. Psycho Sid back into the mix. These guys are just trying to clean up the mess right now. And it shows, even though TSM had had a bit of a back and forth in that fight how little pressure TSM has been under this entire game Reginald through all that team fighting just knew he still had flash up Zuna was completely caught off guard by the flash room prison from Reginald's rise and that's the reason they were able to unlock that second inhibitor and extra wave of super minions and it's almost spelling not behind for Zuna but just the situation he's in he's got to build the last whisper right away he doesn't build the extra speed off of Xerx he's relying on that rapid fire which is you know Kobe said yesterday it's three recurve bows coming in if you activate yeah. it you know if you just wanted to put three recurve bows in your pocket it helps you a hit, little bit you hit Q but he still hasn't been able to build anything and he knows he's behind on the damage he's able to create on Dyrus odd one and soon to be Reginald once he gets some defense in there and even though we're 27 minutes into the game it's still not late right Balkan, because 27 minutes for 33 and a half thousand gold is a very low number. They've been getting out pushed, out farmed, and out played by TSM. And it's just a continuation of that as TSM looks to round up all of them. That's the third Oracle of the game X Special's picked up. That's quite a bit of gold he's putting into those, but it's, it's giving it. him all the control. Right. It's a complete return on investment at the end of the day for him. 28 minutes into this one, a 10 to 3 as Team Solo mid able to find those last few kills and that bottom engagement with the inhibitors that they took out. 10 to 3 as they push this top one now. And I think it's a matter of time here because there's two waves of super minions pushing for TSM. When those waves get closer to the base, Zuna's going to be going off to farm them. If Vulcan could somehow hold this for about 15 more minutes, then Zuna would get enough farm off of those waves. But as soon as Zuna leaves, TSM's going to dive, and I think they're going to get inhibitor number three. Zuna does. No, actually, it's going to be Jace trying to come back over. Man Cloud getting into position now. That wave in the bottom is so gigantic. You are right. It is going to have to be Zuna. Why don't they keep Man Cloud there to poke back? This is just the choice they've made. They feel like Man Cloud can make it back over faster because of his move speed from Jace. All right. And that's probably the reason. But it's not stopping both waves. Man Cloud constantly on a back and forth. And here goes that turret. A lot not, of damage. Not even a siege wave. They're able to just kind of waltz in on this one. You know, we heard the other day Zuna saying Wild Turtle, or not Wild Turtle, but Draven not being the best at hitting turrets because he can't move too much. And that may give Vulcan the upper hand, but so much damage being traded back. That desperate power from Rise, so big as he comes into the fight. And it looks, oh, actually putting it on now to fight it and continue the three kills they have. Dyrus getting out just by the skin of his teeth. And he was just tanking the turret up, which is about a hit away, because TSM knows this game is going to be won right here. That damage was absolutely ridiculous on the front burst of the fight. Nothing they could even give something back on. Trying to give their own medicine down to Wild Turtle there. Cannot get it. Man Cloud is forced back onto the fountain. They're just using everything as the Nexus goes down. And Team Solo Mid finds the win over Vulcan. TSM with a very demanding victory, just crushing Vulcan. This is the most one-sided game they've had, most impressive win of the early Super Week for them.